Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing 10 cozy spring reads. I absolutely love doing these seasonal videos where I recommend different mysteries and different cozy reads that kind of fit within this like season and the themes of the season. A lot of them take place during the spring. Others of them maybe don't take place exactly in spring but they have very springy vibes for a variety of reasons which we'll get into. So let's go ahead and hop into our first book. So our first book definitely takes place during the springtime. It's called Easter Hair Hunt by Nancy J. Cohen. This is part of my favorite Bad Hair Day mystery series. It's one of the first cozy mystery series that I ever read and to this day it's still a top favorite for mine and you can definitely jump in at any point during this series I don't think you'd be too confused it is fun to read in order but you can jump in at any point so this one does take place during an Easter egg hunt however you also have tons of other springy events moments in the garden there's like a bridal shower a baby shower there's lots of just spring themes so even though it's past Easter for this year it's very springy you'll still get those spring vibes I really love it and just look how this I mean this cover that just embodies spring. So basically our main character in this is Marla and she lives in Florida which is another reason why I think this whole series is a really good spring and summer pick because it's Florida so it's pretty much always like warm there from what I understand. Um, so Marla is a hairstylist and she also owns the hair salon at this point in the series. She's actually getting ready to give birth in the near future so the baby shower that happens is for her. But she decides to go to this Easter egg hunt to meet up with a client who wants her to do her hair because the client is supposed to you know, participate in the Easter egg hunt and she's gonna get her hair all messed up before this like nice fundraiser like luncheon. So she agrees to go and Marla goes to meet her client but she can't find her client anywhere. So she starts to go out in the garden to look because it's on this beautiful like big estate which is just awesome. It's a great setting. And she starts to look for her client and she stumbles upon a dead body in an Easter Bunny's costume you know that's just about as springy as you can get for a cozy mystery theme right there and of course this just comes with a huge host of different mysteries and questions there's a lot of great like family history involved because the estate has all this like complicated family history that's super interesting which is a trope that I personally really love so the estate's the like main center focus of the cozy mystery it's springtime you have all the beautiful flowers the garden everything it's it's amazing and like I said the entire series if you do want to start from book one does take place in Florida so it's usually very hot or springy weather in some way. If you're from Florida or you've lived there let me know do you guys ever get cold weather like in, in any capacity like I wouldn't imagine you get snow but do you get like truly cold weather at any point during the year? Let me know. The next series I have to recommend because it's just an amazing series in general and the covers are just about as springy and summery as you can get and the theme. And that is the Ice Cream Parlor Mystery Series by Abby Colette. I don't own the first book in the series. That one is called Deadly Inside Scoop. That one does actually take place during winter, which is kind of an interesting way to start an ice cream cozy mystery series. But this one here, which I'm specifically recommending, is A Game of Cones. It's book two in the series and just oh, look at these covers. They're so gorgeous. But of course, the entire series is themed with ice cream, which to me is just a very spring summer treats like what is more ubiquitous than ice cream with like summertime springtime it's amazing and it's just the colors on these so this particular book and series features our main character Bronwyn Cruz and she is back in Chagrin Falls Ohio which is where her family lives she's redeveloped their ice cream shop there and she's taken over developing a lot of new recipes that her grandmother used to do and like new flavors and stuff which is really sweet her family is really heartwarming I love their interactions and Bronwyn is just starting to really get into her new role as managing and running the ice cream shop Cruise Creamery after her family's name when a big city developer comes to town and is really trying to tear up the neighborhood that her ice cream shop is in along with a lot of other small towns businesses that are just like a major integral part of this town and its essence and you know just small town mom and pop shops and everything and they're really trying to ruin that basically and there's a lot of people who are upset at this person and unfortunately the big city developer is found dead so with a lot of suspects on the line Bronwyn starts to investigate this tries to figure it out so that she can both save the neighborhood as well as figure out the mystery she's also being tempted by someone in her past which is really interesting and again you can definitely jump into this I feel like Abby Collette does a great job of summarizing the cozy mystery series at any point where you're at so you're not gonna miss anything if you jump right into this book but book one was also really fun this one I just had to include because this is just such springy colors to it and it's just a great 
ice cream cozy mystery series. This one I haven't gotten to read yet. I just picked it up. It's a killer Sunday, and I recently hauled this in my birth my birthday book haul, which I'll link above. This one actually takes place in the fall time. It's like a harvest festival, which I'm excited to save for like late summer when I'm getting into my fall vibes, basically. But Game of Cones is a really fun one that takes place more in that spring summer time. Another one that really feels like springy to me is Death by Bubble Tea by Jennifer Chow, and this is an LA night market. Theme. So again, we're taking place, the scene of this cozy mystery is LA, so again, very like temperate weather, you're not going to have like a snowstorm or anything hitting in this series. And this particular one, the book one, basically has our main character, Yale, and she is kind of hesitant because she recently lost her job at like a bookshop and her dad encourages her to pair up with her cousin Celine who's just come from Hong Kong and she wants to pair the two of them together so that they can open like a food cart together at the LA night market and Yale's not really keen on this she doesn't know what Celine's work ethic is like she's not really close to her cousin they don't know each other super well and Celine is also like a social media influencer so she's kind of associating a lot of bad stereotypes with that she's gonna be stuck up and stuff but she's really surprised to find out that they work together really great as a team and that Celine actually has some really creative ideas for like marketing and stuff like that and they're making this amazing bubble tea when unfortunately someone at the food like the night market is found dead with their her their bubble tea like nearby so it doesn't look very good for their food cart, obviously that's terrible publicity and someone has passed away. And so the two of them start to like tag team together and solve this mystery. This is a really fun, engaging, cozy mystery series. I loved the duo between these two, like the, the chemistry between these two, the way they work together, the way they like really had their own strengths and weaknesses. And I just thought they were both such interesting characters. I'm really excited because book two will be coming out this year. I think it's called Hot Pot Murder. It's coming out in June, I want to say. So I'm very excited for that. But this was a really great start to the Cozy Mystery series. And I just feel like Night Markets, LA, that's very springy, summery nice cozy weather and I just had to recommend that one. Next we have one that I checked out for my library recently and that's Buried in a Good Book by Tamara Berry. This is the first in a new series. Book three is coming out this year so you're not too far into the series. I loved this. I read this for my spring cozy mystery reading vlog which I'll link above if you want to check it out. Definitely check out the spring cozy mystery vlog that I included this in. I read seven books in seven days and I also made homemade pitas and steak euros in it. It was a pretty fun vlog so definitely check it out. But this one starts at the very, very beginning of summer vacation in June, which is technically spring. I always think of June as summer, but technically it is spring through part of June at least. Tess and her 14-year-old daughter Gertrude, or Gertie, are moving to a place that she inherited, which is her grandfather's cabin. And it's out in the middle of like nowhere. There's like a really small town nearby, but it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's by a lake, as you can see here, so you have that great summer vacation, you know, retreat, spring retreat kind of vibes to this. And everything is going okay until they arrive, they start unpacking, and they hear these booming noises from outside. So they go outside to investigate, and there is literally fish and a body part that hit, like, falls. Like, there was an explosion, and things are falling from the sky, and that includes a body part. They literally find a body part. Like, I don't know how... I would be running, screaming, like... <laughs> I would not be okay. But... It's shortly after discovered that there was a body in the lake near their cabin. So of course this starts a whole mystery element and our main character Tess is actually a thriller writer so she has this kind of know-it-all attitude about crime scenes and all this because of all of her research and she's constantly butting heads with the sheriff and it's hilarious and her and her daughter's relationship is hysterical. It's funny. It seems very realistic. I mean I you know I don't have any kids. I, I don't have a teenage daughter so I can't exactly say but from my perspective it seems very realistic it's very funny to read they are a great little duo and the characters in this book i love them like every character in this was very interesting well thought out like i just i loved all the characters in this and the ending for this it got me so good it really got me this was a very refreshing very fun very fast paced i read it all in one day cozy mystery and i definitely recommend it i have book two on hold at my library right now and i cannot wait to read it. So definitely had to throw this one in there. Next we have Town in a Blueberry Jam. This is a Candy Holiday mystery series. Our main character is Candy Holiday. She runs a blueberry farm and this takes place in Maine. So again we have kind of like a seaside theme going here. I feel like that's just very springy, very summery, anything by the water like that. And basically they have like a festival going on 
and two murders happen very close together. We have an aging playboy who dies, and then like a queen for like the festival also dies. So there's a lot going on, and Candy starts to look into it. This was a really fun, very like more heavy on the comedy, very light-hearted cozy mystery, so it's a very light, fun read. If you're looking for something that's a little more slice of life than like mystery, a little more comedic, this was a really cute one that I read last year, and the themes with the blueberry and the seaside town just felt like spring to me, so I wanted to include it on this list. Next we have The Rocky Road to Ruin by Mary Allen. This is the first in an ice cream shop mystery series. I also read this for that cozy mystery vlog that I linked above, and I loved this. Our main character in this is Riley Rhodes, and she is a travel food blogger and a librarian at the CIA. So she actually has a little bit of experience with crime, a little bit, but she's kind of on leave because some things happened, and she goes back home to support a good friend of hers, Caroline, who has recently lost her last parent, and she's inherited the utterly delicious ice cream shop with her brother. However, her and her brother are like cats and dogs. They do, they've they never gotten along. They're very different on their opinions on what to do with like the farm and the ice cream shop. And her brother ends up being found dead right after the funeral. So Caroline is looking like a good suspect because she had a lot to gain from his death because now she is the sole beneficiary for all of the you know, things that were left to her and her brother. And there's some other really interesting suspects. I just found this to be a really fun mystery. It was well thought out. There was a lot of different layers to it. The mystery in the end, the reveal was really exciting. And I, I did guess a good part of it, so I was very excited about that. And then just the ice cream descriptions, delicious. Absolutely delicious. Love the cover with the little skull here. It's just amazing. There's also two adorable cats in this. So if you like some cats and furry friends in your cozies, this is another fun cat filled cozy mystery series that I think you'll enjoy. For those of you that like historical fiction cozy mysteries, I would recommend A Quiet Life in the Country. This is the first in the Lady Hardcastle mystery series by T.E. Kinsey. We basically have two main characters, Lady Hardcastle, who is it's an interesting past and she comes from you know like some kind of like nobility she's got money she's got assets and then her maid Florence Armstrong or Flo the two of them are very close friends they've been together for a very long time and they move out to the country to go have a quieter life after some of the excitement they've had in the past which is very fun to learn about basically one day they are taking a nice country walk through the woods and they stumble across a body so of course they call the police but shortly after that they realize the police don't really know what they're doing they're not used to this and that's when some of Lady Hardcastle's past comes into play and the two of them take on the mystery and this is fantastic it has very much like Agatha Christie kind of old style golden age mystery feels to it you got a lot of layers to the mysteries the writing is fantastic the banter between the two of them is fabulous I highly recommend it another series I really recommend for this time of year is the Enchanted Bay Mystery Series by Esme Addison. This is a supernatural cozy mystery series and it has a lot of mermaid elements to it. So as you can see here you have a mermaid statue. The first book in the series is called A Spell for Trouble. The second one is A Hex for Danger which I'm holding here and basically we have our main character in this and her name is Alexandra Daniels and so she is like she finds out that her family has this long lore of like magical abilities and mermaids in the first book and she decides to come back and visit this part of her family because she was never very close to them growing up like her dad kind of kept her away and she starts to get closer to her aunts and kind of learns more about the side of the family there's a lot of interesting things i don't really want to go too much into it because i don't want to spoil anything but the history and the lore and the setting for this absolutely incredible and this does take place as the title suggests on an enchanted bay so you have like the seaside elements you have like the mermaid lore all of it to me just gives that very like springy summery vibes with the water the mermaids I absolutely love it this has been a really fun read I'm not much into supernatural books usually but this one has been a really top-notch series that I've really enjoyed going back to she also has an adorable puppy as you can tell here And I like what this author says, Victoria Gilbert, she says in the back, a tantalizing blend of mystery, magic, and mythology infused with a dash of romance. I feel like that's a perfect way to sum this series up, and Alexandra's just a really fun character to follow. Very 
like a very good sleuth. She's very detailed. She's very interested. She's a very curious person. I feel like that helps her out a lot with her sleuthing. Next we have A Matter of Hive and Death, an Oregon Honeycomb mystery series by Ansi Coco. I recommend this series because in general it's about bees, which I always associate with springtime, you know, flowers, all of that. But the second book in the series in particular, A Matter of Hive and Death, does take place during the springtime. It focuses a lot on hives and bees. You learn so much about bees. I had no idea the extent of like a lot of the things covered in this. It was super interesting to me. Our main character is Ren and she owns this place called Let It Be and it's like a boutique that sells like honey based products. So you have lots of interesting like homemade crafted honey products. You have the bee elements and it's a really springy feeling series just because of the theme throughout the series. Um, this particular book, A Matter of Hive and Death, involves her going to pick up her honey like order from the local like beekeeper and she finds the beekeeper mysteriously dead and it's very dramatic there's a lot of fun writing in this I really enjoy Nancy Coco's writing in this series highly recommend it it's a great springtime cozy mystery series next we have an appetite for murder a key west food critic mystery this is by Lucy Burdett this is a really fun one it takes place in Florida the main character lives on a houseboat so this entire series just gives me again spring summer vibes because the houseboat the Florida setting our main character in this is a freelance writer and she's kind of hard pressed she's not doing great so she applies to this magazine and she's excited about it she really thinks she's going to get in until she finds out that her competition is actually like her ex-boyfriend's girlfriend so not so great there there's a lot of drama with that and something of course happens along the way and our main character is actually a suspect in the murder of the girlfriend so not only is she not looking to be getting that job because of what happened but the girlfriend is also deceased her boyfriend is there it's just a complete mess but the entire theme of this with the food critic element because the position she's applying for at the magazine is as a food critic so there's lots of delicious food descriptions love the florida setting there's a lot of delicious like florida food and like seafood and all of that just again gives me those spring and summer vibes i really enjoyed this book too wasn't as strong for me but the first book in the series that i mentioned was definitely really good and i definitely want to go on and read book three and see how the series continues onward so definitely check that one out that is the end of today's video thank you guys for watching please let me know down below what spring cozy mysteries do you enjoy what would you recommend to other people in the comments and myself thank you again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos soon i do post new book content every single week on this channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye